So okay. in terms of new patients that we see, uh, I have a list of questions that I ask um, in order to kind of see what the origin might have been, right? So if they're 12, 13, 14, sometimes it was a viral infection when they were much younger. And, but because they're so young, they didn't know that it wasn't normal to see like that, right? Um, some, are, we just spoke about the 20 year olds, right? So because they're taking hallucinogens um, more regularly and not going towards the alcohol, so then I have to quietly kind of ask them, it's like, oh, you know, have you been taking um, hallucinogens? Or, you know, there's studies that say um, taking hallucinogens maybe within a week of getting anesthetic, right, for surgery or for maybe a dental procedure, sometimes those combined can start causing symptoms as well. So then you have to kind of ask them those questions. Um, and then in our individuals who are, are in their midlife, sometimes it's they, they're developing POTS, some sort of autoimmune conditions. And so I have to kind of ask them uh, where they are in life. So for me, it's age related. And so then the, then the causality, I, I'll pinpoint some certain causalities based on that. So the first line of defense for like my patients in terms of uh, taking care of them is always that I am like understanding where they're coming from, right? They're coming to us. Everyone has told them, oh, no one ever experiences that. That's all in your head. And they usually have seen several people before us, right? They've gotten like a, one this week. Oh, I've gotten all the MRIs. I've gotten all this. And so they've, they're, you know, they're just getting evaluated. They're getting worked up. And so they just kind of want to know that, oh, this is a condition. And so we start there. Then the second is, okay, let's, we, I understand there's a lot of anxiety. So let's find ways to help you get you know, reduce that. And then um, these, these are the ways I can help you in terms of optometrically speaking. And so then we explain all of that to them. And so I think that's, that's usually how we go about it in terms of just really just telling them everything's okay, you're not going blind, it's not gonna get worse, and yeah. Uh, in terms of symptoms and reduction of symptoms, definitely um, getting them to a point where they're not perceiving it. So if you're fixating on the fact that you see snow and you're fixating on anything that makes it worse, it will get worse, right? So, so we, we definitely um, work on ways to get them to think about other things regarding their vision. So if it's eye focusing or as they're learning how to, let's say, get better depth perception, they're kind of, worried about that and looking at that and trying to perceive it, that all of a sudden they're like, oh, I don't really notice my snow as much. And so you're kind of redirecting their attention a little bit. Um, but the one thing that we've been kind of always kind of hitting a wall with is that autonomic nervous system. So if they're feeling stressed and their sympathetic system is in overdrive, the snow is gonna increase. <laughs> and so if our activities, like so there's one lens that increases, you have to start increasing your focus, and then there's another lens that decreases focus. Um, that, those lenses are the ones that they say, oh, this lens makes it worse, or this lens makes it harder. And so they have to learn how to, you know, relax that. And so that's kind of where, you know, they're working on that ability. Okay, well, how do I decrease this? How do I get me to relax a little bit as I do the task that might increase my, you know, visual snow? And I think they're, they're more aware of their triggers. You know, some people are very detailed about their triggers, but other people actually don't know because they're so overwhelmed by the fact that they have these symptoms. So sometimes it's just helping them through their triggers. So we did a retrospective study in 2023, and uh, we collected amongst the faculty members here. One thing, like if you wanted to use research, is that there's such a comorbidity with migraines. So if you if you reduce their migraines using you know some lenses like FL41 or some green tints, actually decrease the the intensity or the frequency of migraines. So you would use that as kind of the model, sort of, um, but 
For us, we find that FL41 does work and also this kind of purplish color that we call omega, where we look at the colorimeter and look at all the colors. But we do, because we know based on our retrospective study, we know that there's the, the purple, the FL41 um, colors, and you know sometimes that green color are the ones that are often used. And so there's a company called Brain Power Incorporated, the BPI. So those tints, they create their own tints and they have trials. And so we often use those as well. So then cerium colorimetry, they're in the UK. So they're very specific and they actually give you even like the actual, they test the lens and they verify it and then they send you the document of the actual wavelengths that are in those particular lenses. And so that's great. There is one company called Chadwick, it's a lab, where sometimes we ask them to you know, create the lenses for us. And so in terms of practitioners, we always tell them go to that lab, get us a trial set from them of the lenses so that you can do it in your own office in terms of just trialing it. So the trial period can be, you know, doing that trial procedure can be like measuring glasses, right? It's often like doing another, what we call refraction, just for tints. And so, you know, it is, it can be a lengthy process with us here. But what I recommend in terms of, to other lecturers is, you know, get a trial of different densities of FL41, of omega, and try those first. Right? And so you can start the process in your private office, and then if you need someone with a colorimeter, then you know, look online to see who has one. So in terms of managing VSS with um, neurooptometric rehabilitation, or NORT, um, what we find is that you know, some patients don't have significant symptoms, let's say double vision, headaches, or, or that. And so um, we have them tr do it as a trial basis, right? For patients who have very significant symptoms, it is very helpful for them. I tell our patients that in the past, let's say with previous patients, um, even if you had mild kind of symptoms or signs where we measure uh, things, um, one or two patients have said, like, they, they use that kind of percentage. It's like, oh, it added another 30% reduction to my symptoms. Or I had better control of my um, focusing ability, so then I did see a reduction eventually in my snow. So I always have to tell them beforehand because it is a time commitment, right? So it's not like giving them glasses and, oh, here's your tints and that's your reduction. So it is a commitment, and we kind of have to explain that it's an investment of your time as well. But you know, in patients with a lot of symptoms, and especially if they're post-concussion or they have another underlying problem, of course it's gonna help them. And, and at some point in the middle, all of a sudden when I ask them about snow, they're like, oh yeah, yeah, I don't really experience it that much. So it's not their primary anymore. So it really the primary then becomes, oh, I wanna get better in these other areas. And so again, that goal of I'm perceiving it less occurred. So in terms of NORT and how we model it for the patient and how we um, you know, prescribe the therapy techniques, we have three phases of therapy. So the first phase is one eye at a time, right? So an example of that is, let's say I had a, a VSS patient with severe migraines um, this week, and she, she came in, she was a little worried, and she said, oh, you know, every time I put the black patch on, it, you know, I feel like the snow gets worse, right? And I was like, oh, okay, that's unusual. So we have to kind of address the, the, the one eye at a time, so that's phase one, and then whether it's focusing or eye tracking. She was simply doing eye tracking. She's like, oh, I didn't even want to start the lenses yet because you already told me that might increase it. <laughs> and so what we then found out last night is, oh, let me give you an opaque patch where it's not black and she said it was 100% better. And I was like, oh, that's great. So, so you know, now going forward, um, when I do phase one for visual snow, I'll probably give them an opaque patch now because it is neurological. And then phase two then is, okay, we're gonna do similar techniques of eye tracking, eye focusing, and eye teaming with both your eyes open now, right? And so seeing how, how well they take crowded, crowded 
um, information, when I focus with both eyes, how are they taking that? Because what we find is using both eyes together and focusing so it's clear and single, that's harder for them. And so in that sense, we have to then teach them how to relax their eyes. And the one difficulty uh, with that is the integration of both systems, which then leads to phase three. So phase three then is integration, or we call multimodal. So that means I'm adding my balance to it, so some of our POTS patients can't stand for long periods of time. So then we add um, standing, we add vestibular, we add sound, right? So they're, they're sensitive to sound. So if I have a metronome going click, 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 they're not going to be very happy, but we're trying to integrate their visual system and the auditory system. And so just teaching them how to do that. So in the end, that's phase three where we integrate everything. In terms of the mindfulness type cognitive therapy um, in with our visual snow patients, I strongly encourage them to do it. Um, recently, for me, I had gone to physical therapy for some chronic pain, and they were using um, biofeedback with heart rate variability. And I actually, and they were using mindfulness uh, techniques with me, right? So I was doing some somatic breathing, and it definitely improved the heart rate variability for me, as well as decreased my pain. So I do think that's something that needs to be incorporated. And some of the practitioners I know who do have kind of a, an integrative practice, they are using that. They're using nutrition, they're using exercise, they're, and they're using mindfulness techniques, as well as heart rate variability. And so I think um, incorporating all those is really important for patients. And I still think you need to incorporate it into your everyday you know, system, because whenever your stress levels or anxiety goes up, you need a way to bring it down. And so it is important. I think in similar fashion and using nutrition and exercise uh, in terms of treating patients with visual snow, I think it's similar to our post-concussion patients where, you know, they, they do that, right, where they use on supplementation, magnesium, that kind of thing. Um, and so I, you know, depending on if that maybe is the, one of the reasons why they have visual snow, that they do need to incorporate that. And so, again, I, some of my colleagues, that's almost part of their protocol for treating patients with visual snow. So because they have a private practice and they can incorporate that, we're like we're at a state institution, so it's harder to do that. So um, I would definitely do recommendations um, and, and send um, folks for a referral to get that done. Other treatment options for VSS that I've heard of but not successful probably would be the pharmaceuticals, right? So some patients have told me it didn't help. Some patients are on anti-seizure, like low-dose anti-seizure, and they said it helps maybe a little bit. So nothing very significant where a patient would want to continue. Right now, for me, it's just investigating individuals. And then I love hearing about what they tell me <laughs> and what that works for them. So that's actually where I get a lot of my information, and then I start researching it. So that's, that's one thing that um, I, I always ask them what they've heard, what they've learned, and yeah. Because it's neurological, I wonder in the future if it would be kind of like a wavelength based, you know, like it, it seems to be something where the brain is either hypersensitive or in terms of the electrical signals. And so I'm not sure, you know, unless there's some imaging that you can do that will kind of pinpoint what area of, of the visual cortex that it's causing all that visual snow. But yeah, I can't see anything surgical or pharmaceutical or anything right now, but I wonder if it's gonna be in that realm. <laughs>